everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Dawn and I'm here to share some healthy, light, easy, and quick meal ideas for you. And um, today's really special. It's going to be a fun show. I hope you stay tuned for all of it because it's going to be a little longer than normal. But I do have a special guest with me today. And just to kind of preface what we're doing today because I have dropped a couple um, little tools uh, about weight loss and I'm not going to be focusing on weight loss every video but I thought I would just like make one video that just kind of represents if that is where you're at if you put on a few pounds through through this COVID quarantine or if you just kind of want to clean up your your food act there is kind of a way a thoughtful way of doing it that leaves you with readily available food that you can grab when you're hungry instead of having to prepare something and then, you know, go get that food or whatever because you're hungry. And so without further ado, I think I would like to introduce today's guest. And my guest today is Mr. Micah Higgins. He's going to sneak Hi. in. Uh, Micah is the owner of MH Fitness here in town. Uh, been a trainer for long time. 25 years yeah. in the business for a long time. And before we get started, though, you will have to put your uniform Ooh. on. I have, I have a uniform for him. Oh, nice. So there you go. You can okay. go around this way. I was gonna have you like tie me up in the back, but that's like I'm prom or something. Isn't it? <laughs> a little bit different. So I think what we'll do to start is just introduce everybody to the food that we have today. And what we have here is an assortment of the different macronutrient groups. And if you're not familiar with what macronutrients are, they're your your healthy fats, your protein, and your carbs, which your basically your diet revolves around. And um, so we've got a different assortment. We've got our vegetables here. We've got some uh, onion and some zucchini, some broccoli, some cucumber, pepper, mushroom, tomato. And for protein, I actually have a little bit of shrimp that we're going to cook up here. And we've got some spicy chicken that's been prepared. We've got black rice, black beans, and sweet potato for our carb sources. And I also forgot to mention these wonderful beets and radishes. Dropping the beets. Dropping those beets. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and then some flavor enhancers. We have salt and pepper. We've got a wonderful little sweet chili sauce. Uh, my favorite little sweet, hot mustard. Zero calories. A little sugar in here, but not much. And then we've got some healthy fats. We've got some olive oil, a beautiful avocado. We've got some feta cheese, which, you know, cheese I don't use a lot of, but like Parmesan and feta are both on your lower calorie, lower fat range. So those are the choices. And then I don't know if you're familiar with these. If you're a salad dressing person, the Bold House brand is based with Greek yogurt. We're talking 40 calories. Like I think it's like four or five grams of fat. Uh, this lemon basil is new. It's really good. So, and then Micah, tell us about what you brought there. Oh, so, um... We have like some bulk food set up and it's pretty much how I eat as well, um, where I have like a bulk amount of carbs, so I'll have vegetables, I'll have some proteins, and then I'll mix stuff together. Well, one of the things I started doing is substituting in um, more vegan-based or plant-based proteins, and this is a really good one. I'm not sponsored by them, but I should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love this product because it is one of the things, that's a, it's an egg substitute. The texture, the flavor is really, really good. It's super easy to cook with. Um, it's liquid. Uh, I think these are on sale for five bucks. So that's something that you cook? You something cook. I cook. You cook it just like eggs. Just okay. like you would like a, um, the egg whites kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but for me, the big thing of uh, if, if I can make food easily duplicatable, which is great that we're showing the food prep aspect of it. If I can make it easily duplicatable and fast, that means you'll stick to it. Or, or at least you're more likely to stick to it that way. Um, so a lot of times, um, again, like 11 o'clock today, I got done working out, went back home, uh, I cooked up these, chopped these up, put some of this right in the pan, and then added it to my vegetables and my carbs, just like we're, we're about to do a rendition of that, and then I was done within 10 minutes tops. Which is food the beauty prep. of food prep, because yeah. you always have something in your fridge to throw together and mix with something else, and as we're going to do here, there's many different ways to do it. Right. And I like that you have the chopped vibe going. Yeah, great. it's like, I'm, I'm going to start, I'm going to do, um, we're going to cook some shrimp up, and while Micah I always talks, destroy shrimp. That's so cool. I get to watch you do that because I destroy it. Yeah, I'm going to do something I haven't done before, actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
Um, I'm going to squeeze a little lemon into my my little mortar and pestle here, which I broke it, but I'm still going to be able to use it. I'm going to squeeze some lemon juice in. It's almost like a ceviche kind of base almost, kind of? You know, I'm not, I don't know much about ceviche. Well, I think it's like I'm like, in a lemon helps cook the, the protein or something like that. Well, we'd have to check. I don't know. And you know, I, I'm not a big seafood we person food, either. Food science team? Yeah, no, I like that. But you know, for me, I'm not a seafood fan. I, in, in fact, over the last three years, I've gotten to where all I basically eat is chicken and turkey. I love egg whites. I do egg yeah. whites like all day and a little bit of beef on occasion or like a special occasion. But I, and I'm not vegetarian or vegan, but meat just isn't the big choice anymore. On well, workout I days, so. I try to really put in a lot of chicken. Oh, let me just finish the, really the quick. The season changed too. And that's changing people's oh, appetites. It changes everything. Yeah. Everything. So, so far in here, we have three garlic cloves or four garlic cloves, a couple squeezes of lemon juice, and now I'm going to throw in some chopped cilantro and some lemon zest. And this is going to be what we cook our shrimp in. And I'm just going to work that together here till I get some kind of a, a nice little texture here. And so tell us about your tell us about your fitness journey. How did you get into the business? You've been um, out a long time. I've been time. a trainer for quite a long time. I started off in the mil I was military from '93 to '97, and um, I've always been in athletics. I'm one of five brothers, um, but in the military, uh, I went from being pretty much a like police officer soldier. Then I got an office job. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> I got an office job for you. Office Mica grew, and I gained like thirty pounds. I was just putting a hurting on like hot pockets and all that kind of stuff. I was just going crazy on it. So I gained like 30 pounds in no time. So long story short, I started working out every day in this office. I was a dispatcher, what they call a security controller. And I brought weights into my little office, probably no bigger than this kitchen. And I had, I think, a couple pairs of dumbbells. I even brought like a bar dip station. So every morning for like 30 minutes, I'd work out. And I dropped all the weight. I got in better shape than before. And then my lieutenant... Uh, he noticed I was getting in really good shape. He's like, he approached me and he asked me if I would be my squadron sports and fitness monitor, which is, which would be, I'm in charge of all the leagues and athletics, but also making sure that everyone within my squadron was like 600 people were within Air Force standards. So that's how I got started into fitness as a profession. I went from law enforcement and then said, that's not what I want to do right into fitness. I literally got out on a Friday and I've been a trainer ever since. Wow. So there you have it. Yeah. Very cool. And you had your gym here for how long? Um, this one we've had for over three years. I've been a gym owner for over 10 years. Um, but this one, MH Fitness on Park Avenue for a little over three years now. Right on. And it's going fantastic. Very cool. We like that. Absolutely. So now I'm going to have you do something. Yes. So what we're going to do next is we're going to prep some vegetables to roast so that we have vegetables readily available. So you're going to drop the beets. I'm going to drop them beets. <laughs> We're going to have to chop this, chop some of these, and you can chop these. Do you want like small chunks, medium chunks, like what do you want? Like quarter, half inch. Drop some beets. I want a half inch beet. Okay, half inch beet. Half inch beet. <laughs> right. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my little mixture here of cilantro, garlic, onion, and I threw a little olive oil in there, and I'm going to throw this in my pan while he's chopping it. Tell us about beets. Tell us why beets are so important. Why do I like dropping in beets? One, you're freaking delicious. You roast it. Um, but they're really, really good for blood health. In fact, I don't know if you know this, a lot of the Eastern European countries use these really heavily in the Olympics because they're great known for blood health, but what's called NO or nitrogen oxide. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, so beet and beet extract is used quite a bit in uh, supplements. That is. Because they help with circulation. Okay. And the muscle performance. So yeah, beets are great for all those reasons. That's why I drop them in beets. <laughs> But man, because they're delicious. They are delicious. And I grew up on canned beets, so all I knew of a beet was like what came out of a can, like which I love. Thanksgiving beets. I love beets, so I love beets on my salad. And then something just, I don't know, probably a couple months ago, I'm like, I need to start buying a different food and incorporate something different that I've never had. So you love the saying, you love music, right? Oh, yeah. So you could do like holiday beets. I'm dropping turkey beets. <laughs> I'm dropping Christmas beets. You could do a thing. <laughs> I think you're doing the thing. <laughs> no, I'll just be your, I'll, I'll be your hype man. I'll be like the flavor player. I'll be the one dancing going, yeah. Can you smell that? That smells amazing. Hey, I got a question for you. When you cook, do you ever make like sound like, uh, like, uh, like when you drop spices or something? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you ever sprinkle, like, the garlic salt on there and go, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't. No? But I do sing a lot. I usually, when I'm in here, <laughs> oh my God, when I'm in here cooking, the music is cranking. The should, best I part is about being in the kitchen. Let's see. What would you sing, like, right now? Oh, a song I wrote. All right, let's do it. Come on. Are you, are you sure? Hell yeah. Okay, it's called The Air Conditioner Man. I'll just do a little bit. Okay? <laughs> Give me a beat. Is it like Mr. Telephone Man? Oh, wait. Here it comes. Uh, he shuffles out the uh, door every morning and Levi's and boots. Uh, With one eye open, babe, you know he looks so cute. With his Caribbean hats and his dark sunglasses, you know he looks so fine, my little air conditioned man. There you go. Ah, yeah! <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'll, I'll play the spoons. You was I'll rocking that beat. <laughs> I could have went on like Chris Cornell Spoon Man. Okay, let's. I'm gonna give you a hand here. I'm gonna jump in. Am here. I not going fast enough? No, but you're doing a perfect job though. Make sure they're all in quarter sizes. I gotta keep an eye on that shrimp. It's you know, also why I'd be. I'm scared. Man. I'm gonna be on TV and like slice off off my finger. Ooh, that would be terrible. Just, I just um, critiqued my daughter on how she was cutting vegetables. Oh, really? And so that would be a shame if I critiqued my daughter and I cut vegetables correctly. Yeah, that's my finger. That'd be horrible. Okay, so y'all can't smell it, but the garlic and the shrimp right now are smelling up. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Oh, garlic. Makes it better. Garlic's got it. Garlic is serious. Stuff. Okay. So Beans. what we're going to do, we're going to shove all this into that, into that hole. Okay. Uh -huh. so that'll be a good base to start for our... Hey, now we're dropping the beets. Now we're dropping uh -huh. the beets. Uh -huh. So what we're trying to do here is we're just going to roast some veggies. In fact, I didn't wash my tater. So that we have something here to just always... Okay, there you go, sir. Chocolate. I think that knife's probably better. And I think we're just about ready over here. So what are we going to do with the shrimp beets? I think what we should do with the shrimp is to create a nice little bowl. Now, real quick, on, on the shrimp, when yes. you use shrimp, are you using it more like, not a garnish, but like an accent? Or do you ever use it like, hey, I'm getting my protein from this? I always use it for getting my protein from okay. this. Okay, so, you so you'll sometimes Because use the thing about shrimp that's protein. so awesome is it's like 99% protein. Okay. It is like the best... If you're trying to, if you're calorie counting, if you are trying to minimize and get the most from your food, like putting beets in here, you want to talk about maximizing the health benefits of your of your roasted vegetables. You got your broccoli in there. Super Look at the colors we're yeah. putting in there. If you can make something with an assortment of colors, you are on to something awesome. Because that's what we're looking for. Do you ever get tired of eating shrimp? Like you ever find the flavor can be too much? Uh, no, I try to make it different ways, and I don't really eat it that much. So you kind of sparingly use the shrimp? Yeah, it's like when I... Like a fancy day. Like a fancy right. day, like a special right. day. Yeah. And you know how, another way I really enjoy my shrimp, I'm going to back over here to the cupboard really quick. One thing that I really like, I would have a plethora of it too, is this veggie spaghetti. Because you know, there's so many, I should have brought this out. There are so many pasta imitations out there. There's red lentil, there's black bean, um, chickpea, edamame, spinach, but they all, all of them have kind of a funny texture. I do like the black bean and I like the, uh, the red lentil and some of the chickpea pastas are really good, but this still has wheat in it. So if you're, if you're gluten, you can't do this, but it also has like spinach in it, but it has the exact texture of spaghetti. And I really like to take this. In with this, and then I have Ooh. roast jars of roast. That's like super quick peppers. and super clean too. Super quick. A little bit of olive oil in your in your base to cook your shrimp. Boom, you're done. So let's get this going. Right. Let's move on our veggies here. I got a little sidetrack there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just we're gonna make a nice salad out of this. So what we would do is we would just start with a little bit of lettuce. I like to add rice to my salad, so I like to keep the lettuce amount kind of small so you don't have this overwhelming amount of lettuce. And for me, uh, I know I've mentioned this time and time again, 
If you are a fan of rice and you haven't tried black japonica rice yet, you really need to give it a try. It is lower in calorie, uh, and it's high in protein, high in fiber, and it's just got more health properties than even brown rice or quinoa. And it's got this wonderful, earthy, hearty texture to it that I just love. And if, you know, if you're going to eat something, you should eat the version of it that offers you the best nutritional value. Don't you agree? Yeah, the most, the most nutrient-dense food you can find. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a little spoon of this rice. I'm going to create my own little bowl here. And I'm going to take some, where is my, here it is. I'm going to scoop my, my little shrimpies on there. And I'm going to throw in a couple of these wonderful baby portobello mushrooms. And we'll put some cucumber in there. And a little tomato. Put some tomato in there. And let's do some of this wonderful avocado. Mm, that makes it better too. Oh, totally does. And now, something like this, you know, you've got all that wonderful garlic flavor in there. So you're not gonna need like a heavy dressing. So there would be a wonderful little lunch bowl. Took what? I mean, I had some stuff prepped, so it took eight minutes to cook the shrimp. And it's beautiful. It's pretty to look at. It is. And it, once again, we've got an arrangement of different colored um, items in there because, you know, all the different colors of food represent different nutrients, vitamins, and that's a really low-fat idea. You could top it with a little bit of olive oil. But, you know, oh, what else would be good is this lemon basil would be really good on there. But there you go. There's a nice little bowl. It took just a few minutes. Well, I think the key thing for that, too, for the people watching is that if you have some of these things ready, right, like you have the rice ready, uh -huh. if you always have some of that ready, if you always have some vegetables cut up or an avocado in there, you can piece together from uh, that quickly, base quickly. quickly. Which is what we're working on here. Did we get everything in there? Uh, we just need to get this yep. zook in there. And then we'll be ready to toss that. I like to cut my zucchini a little fatter because it cooks so quick. Now what we're going to do here, and this is very important because when you roast your vegetables, you don't want to saturate them in oil. So I look at that and I think that's probably about three servings for me. And one serving of olive oil is one tablespoon. So all I'm going to do, just going to, and I measure, you have to measure because if you don't measure... It's so easy to overfat yourself. You don't want to overfat yourself. Because it really doesn't need it. I like that saying, don't overfat yourself. Yeah, don't overfat yourself. <laughs> you want to feel sluggish and icky? Overfat yourself. It'll do it's it every not time. About eating. Just don't overfat yeah, yourself. Yeah, don't overfat. Just perfectly fat yourself. Don't overfat. Perfectly. Because if you perfectly fat yourself, you'll get that full of balance. Satiated feeling. Yeah without feeling the guilt. And if you're choosing healthy fats... But I also like it like on a Friday night, you can say, you know what, tonight, I'm going to fat myself. Oh, I'm going to go a little bit more. I want to add in some potato chips in there and you can just, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> some sour cream. Yeah, yeah just fat a little Throw bit. some butter on top of that olive oil. You know they have those things like uh, Motivation Monday? Fat yourself Friday. Fat yourself Friday. You can do well, it. you know, and that some people do. Some End of the week. I never really, I never really bought into that yeah. the whole cheat day thing no. because you can screw up your whole week if you're working on goals. You can screw up your whole week and one by meal. one day of going. I'm just gonna oh go get God. that double yeah. cheeseburger. I'll put some bacon on it. Where the next my pizza for dinner? Extra big fry, like extra cheese on it. Yeah. I need that Pepsi. And I need that Pepsi. That cracks me up. And being in the service industry, we see a lot of that. Okay, so what we did, we tossed this with a little bit of olive oil, and now we've got a wonderful plethora of vitamins, flavors, we've got our colors in there. I got a quick question. Yes. When you're doing this, do you put a little seasoning on kind of as you go? Or you do know, you roast them because you like the roast flavor? I love the roast You like the roast flavor, okay. I love the roast flavor. But I usually salt and pepper. I didn't this time, but I will before I eat. I'm a sea salt pepper girl. But I buy different, like, uh, Flavor combo seasonings, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that are really good as well. So we're just going to put this in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. And oh look, we have some ready already. Bam. <laughs> Booyah. See, there we go. Booyah. We are looking good. Okay. So.
So, mister, it's your turn. What are you going to use? What are you going to, what are you going to make? Mm, that's good. You have all this stuff. You got the chicken. And this is a field mm. roast. This is a non-meat substitute. And I have never had this before, but it is based with eggplant and fennel. I like those. So uh, this is the brand that I use. So Okay. Then you talk um, about that. Like a typical thing I would do, this is a great setup. I usually have bulk foods in a couple different categories. I always have rice and I always have uh, vegetables. Those are always kind of on standby. My proteins all, all, all alternate out, but these are really good. And a couple of things. Can I, can I yeah, play? please. Um, this brand here is really good. This is what I use. I think the texture is really good. Mm -hmm. um, the flavor is really good. Um, and what's the protein content for one of these? It's 25 grams. That's a lot. For one sausage. 25 grams. Wow. So no, that's a, crazy. A typical breast of chicken is anywhere between 18 and 25 grams mm -hmm. of protein. For, so again, you get a lot of protein dense. That's crazy. Nutrition. I did not realize that. I don't Slice towards the air. Now, there a couple little things with the way to get these out of here is I will cut an end off just on one end here like this. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of score it a little bit like that towards there. And then I can just kind of peel it back that way. And so what I'll do, and this is literally just what I made for lunch today, almost to the T. So I'll just slice this up little bits like this. I'm going to try one. No, they're really good. I like them a lot. They have different flavors, but this is my favorite one. The one you got right there is my favorite one. Um, but a little drier than a normal sausage, but wonderful flavor. They're really good. And so I'll put this in a little pan with a little bit of olive oil and kind of crisp it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's get you started. We're going to do that. We're going to go. We're, We're going to go. We're going to make something. I'm going to catch the kitchen up right now, watch. This is how you do my house, kapow! So, are you interested in vegetables? Are so, you, what are you going to do? Absolutely. So, what I would do, I roast vegetables all the time, too. So, okay. when I get home from work, I'll kind of go by what how I, what vegetables I'm in the mood for. Mm -hmm. I'll usually have a bag of steamed vegetables on standby. Uh -huh. um, I'll have Brussels sprouts on standby, and I'll decide which one I want to roast or cook. But I have them there as a point. Mm -hmm. And they're usually pre-cooked, except for the Brussels sprouts. I'll just roast them as they are. Love roasted Brussels sprouts. But I will usually get a base of rice, and I usually typically for myself, like, so for instance, at lunch. At lunch, when I'm more mobile and I'm moving quite a bit, I'll have a little bit more starchy carbs at night, since I just had my lunch. I'm going to show you what I would do at night. I would probably put about that much carbs in, and that's it for nighttime. Um, then I would just grab a handful of veggies. I can go ahead and do that. Yeah, help yourself. Or should I use like a spatula? Should I be all classy oh. using a spatula? You know, you're in my house. You can uh, yeah. use your hands. I'm gonna go classy. <laughs> classy as well. So then I'll put in a lot of vegetables. Now, one of the things we talked about is Did like, you want lettuce or anything, or are you just going vegetables? I'll go greens too. Okay. In the summer, I tend to crave a lot more like fruits and vegetables. So I will change the ratios more in the in the summertime. So I'll grab maybe like about that much. So you can see the ratio of like roasted vegetables. Um, fresh veggies, and then I love roasted vegetables. And I love beets. So I'll typically so put in nice. about that much vegetables and carbs, and this would be a typical like nighttime uh, ratio for myself. And then um, by the time we cook these down, is that ready? Yeah. Um, you can throw them in there. Absolutely. Right. And this is literally again 24 grams of protein. And I'll show you one other little trick. I'll do is this heats up a little bit. Um, if I'm craving more protein, I'm kind of I manage my macros throughout the day too. I try to get in about 170 to 180 grams of protein a day. So I'll look at that. I know that's 24 grams of protein. Now if I know I want to have a little bit more, if I've had I don't know like a a day that I'm not getting as much in, I can substitute it in. And again, not pushing our product, I'll get some of this. Uh, I'll let that cook down a little bit more, but I'll add in just a little bit of this. Just in the nuts. Then I get five or six extra grams of protein. Um, I try to get around 30 to 35 grams of protein per meal. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll just add that right on top, and that, that's my meal. That's typically what I go to. If I'm fancy, then I'll add some of the avocado in there. But same thing, like at night, I'll probably do exactly what you added in there, <coughs> about a quarter avocado. That's what I'll add into mine. And that's a typical bowl for me. Like literally, and again... I'm coming from the the perspective more from I want my food to taste good, but I, I just look at it as fuel. What's the best fuel What's, nutrient density for my body? That's what I want in my body. Absolutely. See, and I think that's important to bring up because 
our society does not view food as fuel at all. I, and I, of course, we like subconsciously know that we've got the food, pyra the food pyramid, which that's, I go by the food pyramid pretty much. I always have. Um, but we don't, we think, we, we don't think of food as something that sustains our life. It's because it's something that you know, reduces stress. Right. It's something that calms our nerves and feeds our emotions. Or it could be a high. It could be a dosing meter. Or it could be it, so many it different things. It could be a medication. Things. And so it took me, you know, three and a half years ago when I started this journey to, to really understand how food is just, it's fuel. Well, I have a question it's for you, and this fits in with what we're doing here. You started your fitness journey like more intensely and focused by how long ago was that? Three and a half years. So three and a half years ago. So this has changed your diet dramatically over the last three years, correct? Oh, totally. And I followed my fitness pal for like two years. Like I would enter my food every single day for like two and two and a half years. And just recently I've been able to lay that down and say, okay. I got it now. I've changed the way I eat. Right. But it doesn't happen overnight. Our tongues are so funny how our tongues are used to fat-laden food. And now I can actually have a salad that I don't need to drench it in salad dressing. And that's when I realized, wow, I really changed the way I eat. Well, and you know another thing based on that topic too, and I think this is um, something that's out there for everyone, if you're just starting to want to even get in shape, if you just don't want to eat a lot healthier, your palate changes over time. And there's some deep psychology to this, like, if I have crap food right now, if I go and have fried something, it might initially I might go, ooh, but then it feels like garbage in my body. I do not like it. I feel like garbage. I call it the food hangover, right? I crave this stuff now. I yearn when I eat it, I'm like, oh, God, it's so good. But that's changed over time, and that's also because I've associated this with healthy. I've associated this with my results. I've associated this with, with feeling good. Us. And with feeling good. Right. So it's, it's the whole association thing, too. So with this egg stuff, just egg, I find it cooks a lot better if I pay a lot of attention to it. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm constantly mixing it because one thing I will say about it is it sticks a little bit differently. Yeah. And so I constantly will be stirring it probably more than most people, but I will do this and literally it cooks really fast and I love it. And that's another thing. It smells cooking. really good. And then, so there's the protein, and that's about 30 to 33 grams of protein. That pan. Right is there. And that's, that's all vegetable based, 100%. It's absolutely delicious. And again, I'm not a plant based guy. I'm not so you've a got vegan a, like guy. a vegan meal there. This, is, this would be considered a vegan meal. It's um, no, and, and again, just to, to, to clarify with people. Um, a, a vegan labeled meal, the products have to be labeled vegan, but basically it's 100% plant based with no animal right. product whatsoever. So, this is a vegan meal. Um, and again, it's great to show that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm not endorsed by these people. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but it's just stuff I really like. And so, I try to share it with my clients and anyone that will listen. Like, if you, a lot of my clients do this, they'll go, I don't have time to eat. Oh, I'm just always in a hurry. Well, do something like this. That's too, like that took what five minutes total. Is that well? That's that's the whole that's the whole thing I'm trying to convey. Is right. That healthy Personal. eating does not have to take a long time. If you take one day a week, Sunday, you, it's usually Sunday, right. and just prep food, chop food, have food in containers. Slice food, Look cook that. food, open a can. I mean, all we did was open a can there. Put these sexy suckers on. And then, and so, and I'm going to make another bowl, and then I think Here's, we're going to wrap it up. Your bowl is sexy with my bowl. Look at that. That's the sexy bowl over here. <laughs> Get a zoom, zoom in on that sexy bowl. Now zoom in on the not sexy bowl. This is like a carpenter. I'm close to carpenter's bowl. Sexy bowl, carpenter's bowl. <laughs> so let's make. I'm going to make one more bowl here, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, for me, you know, I do, I've been in motion every day since they opened, except yesterday. I did skip yesterday. But for me, on a workout day, this would be like a great come home after workout, after I've settled down and have, I need, when I need a lunch. So in here, I would have like three ounces of chicken. I've got my black rice. I've got my black beans, which also has protein. 
I've got some greens and I've got some vegetables. And I would probably top that with that bolt house ranch, which it's another thing you have to measure. I mean, if you're really going to watch what you put in your mouth, you need to measure stuff. And so there's another bowl. Oh, it probably needs it. That's another sexy bowl. Damn it. Mine looks yeah. so plain. Gotta get that color in there, dude. It's all about the color. You gotta do some presentation skills, huh? And there you go. And you know, the other thing that just quickly, you know, we've got this wonderful tray of these roasted vegetables. Another thing I like to do is have these on hand for breakfast and throw your egg whites in there. Make a little veggie scramble. Mm. I'm not really good with omelets, but I can scramble some veggies. And, you know, so there's just a plethora of things that you can do if you have food prepped. And I think we should probably wrap it up things. I think we could go on yeah. for like, wow, we yeah. don't want to lose our people. We had a little entertainment. We had some good food ideas. You've been an awesome you've been, you've guest. Been the you started my guest series off. Give me some of that. Bars Wait, really me. high. Damn. Yeah. Really high. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it brought a smile to your face. And hopefully it gave you some ideas on ways to treat your body really good. And for that, we are out. <laughs> <laughs>